Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this morning's study, December 25th, 2023. And this is one of the dates that we have on our line. And uh, we're going to look at this and try to understand Daniel 11, uh, verses 14 and 15, see how they apply to us. But anyway, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Uh, dear Father in heaven, thank you for your goodness and love, and we just invite your spirit to be here as we open your word together. Once again, Lord, we are looking uh, for light for our feet, and um, we just ask that you can give us wisdom and understanding. We pray for each person searching for truth, which you can guide and direct them and bless them. May your angels watch over them. And may you help us in our time of need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> okay. So we've been looking at all these numbers. And yesterday we we went through a bunch of them, uh, trying to sort out what this actually means. One of the dates that we ended up with in our line was the date today, December 23rd, uh, 2023 or December 25th, pardon me, 2023. Now, this is just this word, the Hebrew word 8141, which uh, represents years. We find this this word in, uh, uh, I think the first place that we noted it um, is in Daniel 11, verse 6. So the 8141. And if we do an inclusive count from September 11th, uh, 2001, it will bring us uh, to the end of today, December 25th, 2023. The context of that then is that we have this word for years, and of course, this represents this chronology that we have. Now, December 25th, obviously, is an important date. We got uh, uh, Charlemagne is crowned as emperor or whatever it is in December 25th. I can't remember which year. We got Clovis who's baptized on December 25th. There's a bunch of December 25th. I'm baptized December 25th. It's obviously the end of our 777 structure. So that becomes important. And we also looked at this word years in Daniel 11 verse, what was it? Verse 13, after certain years. Right. So we had looked at that phrase after certain years. So we knew that years can count up to December 25th, 2023, just going from 9-11. And then we had addressed it's in this document here. If we take certain years and we add them together, we get a number that's 14,757. And that's going to be the number of days from November 9th. I'm just trying to see if we add the 360 to it. So we have to add the 360 to it from November 9th, 1989 to April 5th, 2030. So this is one of the ones that marks April 5th, 2030, which to me is a pretty remarkable uh, number there, that span of time. OK, so that's uh, footnote number six there. Now, if we just take the word years or, or I'm certain which is also translated as time, 6256. It's, it's a period of 17 years and 46 days. And if you count from November 9th to December 25th, that's going to be 46 days. Right. So, so it's 17 years. So that means if you count from a November 9th, you will get to December 25th. Right. So here we have December 25th marked. Right. So we have it marked with just the Hebrew number 8141. It's December 25th today. It's that day that's marked from 911. And then if we, we add it to certain years, you know, after certain years, it's also going to give us this symbol of December 25th. So what does this mean? So we have this date today. It's a symbolic date. We're not expecting something on this date. That's not the idea, but it does put a date in our time in these events. So why is it pointing to today as a symbol? Get what, Dwight? I can't hear you. You're muffled. 
I'm, I'm sorry. How many days was this total? So you're talking about the, the certain years? Yes. 14,700 and what was the footnote there? 14,757, I think. Yeah, 14,757 days. So that goes from November 9th, 1989. Now, does the resignation of Rebecca President of USSR on this day, 1991, Okay. So I hear a faint sound, but I cannot make out. I heard, the, I think, the word resignation, but so you, you're not very clear, your voice. So remember, we added certain years plus the symbol of 360. Okay. Does the resignation of Gorbachev in 1991 have any impact on this line? Well, yes. So we got uh, Gorbachev on December 25th, 1991. So what happens on December 25th, 1991 is, I think it's actually, it says here, okay, on December 25th, 1991, the Soviet hammer and sickle flag lowered for the last time over the Kremlin, thereafter replaced by the Russian tricolor. Earlier in the day, Mikhail Gorbachev uh, resigned his post as president of the Soviet Union, leaving Boris Yeltsin as the president of the newly independent Russian state. So that's that's the, the end of the Soviet Union. So December 25th, 1991. Yes, so that's part of our line in 2021, and it's also part of that 777 days in 1989. So both of these fit together. So, I mean, the question is then, if we're looking at the end of the Soviet Union, because what we're remembering about this is we have uh, Greece representing the Soviet Union. And so this marks the end of the Soviet Union in that sense, right? It represents that. But it's it's also pointing forward to what happens at the end. So part of the problem with these verses is we're addressing the end of Greece and the beginning of Rome. And the end of Greece marks the end of our line. The beginning of Rome marks the beginning of our line. Of course, God declares the end from the beginning. So there's parallels between the end and the beginning. And so we have this December 25th date. Now, it shows up here today as a symbol. So 9-11 to September 25th. Now, we know 9-11 is also 11-9. And 11-9-89 and 11-9-19, those two are related as well. OK, we have those connected in the, the Shibboleth and um, Shibboleth and um, Jephtha. So that was Shibboleth and the Jephtha. Jephtha is 3316 and Shibboleth is 7641. Together, that's 10,957 days. Number of days between November 9th, 1989 and November 9th in 2019. We also have this connection between 9-11 and 1989 as well. So there was a whole bunch of things dealing in, in that that line, dealing with the judges. So so we know because of that study that we can place these symbols all together. 9-11, September 11th, and 9-11, whether it's 89 or 19, they're all really the same symbol. And so we can use this November 9th and the September 11th to produce the, the end date, December 25th, 2021, or December 25th, 1991, or also gives us December 25th, 2023. So the question is, what is that telling us about the time that we're in? Because we're not predicting anything on this date, but the fact that this date is produced here as we're studying, you know, light for our feet, what is that trying to tell us, right? Because some people would say, oh, I found this date in the future, like they would have done this before, and they would predict something on December 25th, 2023. That's what they would do. And we didn't do that. And, and I'm not looking in the news and saying, oh, there must be some event happening today. What is it? I, I understand it's a symbol, but it's a symbol that still speaks to us. So the question is, what is it saying to us right now? No. Dwight asks, how do we place these all on the line? Well, that's one thing I've been doing, um, placing these on a the line. I don't have a good diagram of it all. It just starts to get really messy. I'm trying to figure out how to clean it up. That's partly 
why we're studying this right now. I want to know what things I need to put together. Um, because when I look at uh, the lines that are produced, um, what I end up with is really, one is I have too many dates to put on a line. <laughs> so I figure for all of this, we probably have about 25 dates that we would have to put on a line. And, and they don't really fit on a line too well. So, so we have to break it up in some way. We have to decide what the, dis the important dates are. So in our history, if we're going to look at December 25th, the first December 25th we have, well, I would actually say it's December 24th because we're going to put those together. Uh, what happens December 24th, 19, 1979? Anybody remember what happens December 24th, 1979? Right. So we have the, the Soviet-Afghan war begins on that date, as Dwight noted there. So we got the Soviet-Afghan war. Now, we know that prior to that, another date that we had was October 6, 1979. That's going to be when Jimmy Carter and John Paul II meet. So um, so we know there's a connection here. And, and the reason why we looked at the Soviet-Afghan wars, that we were looking at at Greece, at the beginning of Greece. The Greece is has this 10-year war, and that 10-year uh, war, what did it parallel? What was the purpose of understanding that war? when we were going back looking at, at Greece. So if we look at this chart, we, this, we were dealing with all these numbers here as well. So we went that war that was from uh, December 24th, 79 to February 15th, 89. So we, one is we connected at the 191 years uh, back to the Pope being taken captive. So that's going to mark uh, the end of that 191 years. It's going to be the end of that Soviet-Afghan war. And then we have, of course, the time of the end, 1989, 276 days after the end of the Soviet-Afghan war. But that's also going to have 776 days, 777 inclusive days, from November 9th, 1989 to December 25th, 91. So if we looked at this period of time from 79 to 91, December 24th, and then you get the next day would be December 25th, but you're just going to take out how many years from 79 to 91. Simple math. We have 12 years in there. So we get to this December 25th, 1991. Now, also, I'm going to be baptized December 25th, 1982. It's not part of this line, but it is a symbol, right? December 25th. Baptism of Clovis, all these other December 25th. And so now we have this December 25th, 1991. So, so what does that mean then when we look at the December 25th, 2023? So remember here, we're also going to have the four winds of heaven. So the four winds of heaven produce 16,073 days. So that's going to be from the start of that war in, let me see here. 16,073 days. So, yeah, so it's going to be from the start of the war, I think. Yeah, I'm going to do this math because it's going to be a period of 44 years. So it's going to be from the start of the war. So we're going from December 25th, basically, 79, right? If we go from the end of that to the start of December 25th, 2023. So we have this period of 44 years. So what's the significance there? We get 44 years to from that December, the end of December 24th, 79 to the beginning of December 25th, 2023. Right. That's going to be 44 years. And when we get that symbol from the four winds of heaven, no, nothing happens today. Right. We're not looking for anything in Russian history or anything like that. So we have the beginning of the Soviet Afghan war. Now we have December 25th, 2023. Four winds of heaven days later. So nobody has any thoughts on this. But yeah, 800, year 800. Um, he's the first emperor, emperor of the Holy Roman Empire on December 25th. And so we have another event, December 25th, which is William I becomes crowned king of England uh, in 1066. I'm not sure how relevant that is but 
we have December 25th as a symbol. So now we have these 44 years, the four winds of heaven. This is addressing this line, this history. We have December 25th marked out with the symbol of the word years and also certain years, right? So you can go from November, uh, November 9th in one year and it'll bring you to December 25th, you know, uh, whatever it is years later. Okay. So, so we have all these December 25th, but we still need to know what these things mean. And why is it marking today? Now we do have more dates coming up, more symbolic dates in our lines, but, but we have symbolic dates. We don't have an actual event. We, you know, we're not predicting anything, but we still have 44 years from the start of the Soviet Afghan war to December 25th, 2023. And, the, and they're both connected to December 25th, even though one's December 24th. Okay, a warning like 120 years before the flood. Now you put there warring, but I, I think you meant warning. Don't know about a warning. So we're, we're in the midst of something, right? So we know that we're in the midst of this, this civil war, right? Now, um, so there's a lot of events that we could look at in history and try to say, well, what, what did they symbolize? I mean, we have George Washington crossing the Delaware River on Christmas Day in 1776. Right? They called Gorbachev in 1991, of course. So we got all those symbols. It's got to mean something, right? I mean, it's got, there must be some way in which we can understand it. Now, this line, this is the line dealing with uh, Greece that we had. We had this uh, December 25th, 2023 as being the arrival of the third angel. In this line, we also address the 1,533 days and, and the 186 days and things like that. But so, so that line is still relevant. And we're, we're addressing that line. In some ways, we're addressing, uh, the fourth angel arriving from December 25th, 2021 to January 20th, 2025. So we know in this line that we see in front of us, we have the third angel arriving today. Right. That's what it says. Right. So so there, that means a message arrives. Now, usually you have a third angel arriving. That's going to be a disappointment. But we just we just have it here as, you know, the third angel arriving December 25th, the date we didn't predict anything. And then we have the 391.5 to January 20th, 2025. And January 20th, 2025, that's going to address a new president. I, I don't think it's going to be Biden who's going to be president on January 20th, 2025. But we will have a, somebody become president that day. I, I don't think anybody would predict Biden's going to be president. You're going to have to find someone else to run against Trump. I mean, if Biden's even going to still be alive, right, by then. So it's the third angel arriving in this line. And then when we had drawn that line, we then had gone back because these lines, these were from Daniel 11, verse 5 and 6. And, and so that wasn't really the complete line. So we, we went back over these other verses of the Battle of Raphi and Paneum. Uh, so Raphia first, now we're into Paneum. So and that's uh, coming after certain years, right? So that certain years brings us to today. So it wasn't the first thing that brought us to today, right? Let me think here. That was the, the years that brought us to today. And then also the four winds of heaven brought us to today. And then after certain years is going to bring us to April 5th, 2030. So we have all of these connections to these lines. We have today connected, but we also have April 10th, 2024, right? And which is going to also going to go to April 5th, 2030, right? As 2,187 days. It's going to be a first day of the first month. And we also have April 8th, you know, 2024, uh, which we had another way of coming to that date. That's going to be with, um, in those times, right? So in those times, uh, we could use instead of 1992, we can use 1990. Some translators look at it. That's the word that's being translated. But anyway, it's going to bring us to the, our history. So we have today, and then we have the first day of the first month. So April, so you got January, February, March. 
Uh, this year is going to be a leap year. So you got uh, 30, 30, and 31. So that's 91 days plus 10 days. That's 101 days. And then you got, you got six, one, so what, 107 days or something? I think is what we had from today to April 10th. So we have 107 days to April 10th. And that's a symbol of the 10th day of the seventh month. So from today, we got this 107 days. And I guess there's more notes in the chat. No, that's just the ones I read. Now, the first day of the first month as a symbol relates to April 19th, 1844. And we have the end of our lines is December 25th, the end of our 777 structure. So, I mean, I'm trying to put this together. So what does it tell us? It just... I mean, it tells us something, right? So we can agree on that, that that it's not just um, a meaningless coincidence. It, it tells us something. It connects us to these other lines. Now, it's two years to the day since um, December 25th, 2021, where we had that 777 end. So you guys are going to have to help me here. I'm not, I'm not going to solve this problem by myself. So we've got this 17 years and 46 days that goes from a November 9th to a December 25th. We've got the 1746 that, of course, represents Capricar's constant. The 1764 represents uh, the structures related to the prophetic mirror in the 70 weeks. We have this December 25th. Today, 2023, that's connected to that. So, so what are we going to say about the significance of what we're experiencing and that symbol today. I know McDonald's, you got in a little bit late here, but we're discussing all of the symbols that point to December 25th and especially the ones that point to December 25th, 2023 today. So we're not predicting anything today. We didn't predict anything. We're not expecting an event today. We're just simply saying today is marked. Why? Why did God mark this date for us? There must be a reason. Well, let's look at another date. So one of the things that we we have we can say about our lines is we know that we have from December 25th, 2023, we can count back to March 27th, 2023, 273 days, right? Because we did that in 19, uh, not 1991, 2021. So we had a March 27th, 2021, and we had a December 25th, 2021. And we could also mark March 27th, uh, 2021 by looking at verse 15. So let's, let's see if this helps us. So in verse 15, it's going to um, say, so the king of the north shall come. Okay, so in, in the historical understanding, this is Antiochus the third coming. This is going to be regarding the Battle of Paneum, right? So this is the king of the north coming again. So in our history, this has to do with republicanism in the U.S. Now, if we take the terms king of the north and we put them together, right? So just the king, it produces 11,256 which is a period of 30 years and 0.8172 days. Now, the only significant uh, span, I mean, there's two places that I, that I placed it, but the most significant seems to go back to 1989, uh, November 9th, and count that many days. And that's going to bring us to October 19th, 2022. So that was Iran's birthday. Right. So it was his 45th birthday. But if we take this phrase that we have here and instead of just saying the king of the north, but we, we actually give an action to it, the king of the north shall come. We add 935 days. So we're going to get a different number. Right. We're going to get 1126 plus 935. So when we do that. We're going to get 12,191 days. So I'll show you this here. So here we have this line, and you can see here, this is November 9th, 1989 at the top. 
and then I can go down this column and and I can count from different ones. So this one's actually not from November 9th. I'm going to count from December 25th, 1991, uh, 12, 11,256 days. Okay, so that's going to give me uh, Iran's birthday, right, October 19th, his 45th birthday. But if I count from November 9th, so one I'm counting from the end of that 777 days, the other one I'm counting from the beginning, and and that is I'm taking the number, one two one one two five six and I'm adding the th- the nine thirty five days from shall come and it gives me twelve thousand one hundred ninety one which is March twenty seventh twenty twenty three so March twenty seventh twenty twenty three is that significant right we have March twenty March twenty seventh twenty twenty one two hundred and seventy three days later there's December twenty fifth twenty twenty one now we have March 27th, 2023, and 273 days later is today. Now, we didn't have anything happen on March 27th, 2023, that I remember, that we noted or anything. But we can connect that to a number, right, 12,191, which is the king of the north shall come. So that the Hebrew numbers in that phrase give us that number, 12,191, and it brings us to March 27th, 2023, from the time of the end. So we know that in the time of the end, in our history in 1989, the King of the North comes. That's the Battle of Paneum, our history, time of the end. 1798, that's the Battle of Raphia. So, so we can connect that to 1981 or 1991, 1989. Right. And we can connect it now to 2023. So we can go back to that history and we can say our history is related to that history. But obviously we're not looking for exactly the same events, but we are looking for a response to what happened on January 6th. So we had January 6th, uh, 2021. Right. So that's going to be the siege of Washington. So now we look at this line. So we're saying, so the king of the north shall come. So you add those three numbers together. It's going to bring you to March 27th, 2023, if you're counting from November 9th, 1989. And then we are addressing the casting up of a mount. Uh, So the word cast up, we're going to put this one in here. So when he's going to cast up a mount, that's going to be uh, the Hebrew number 8210. So that's going to be H. Eight two one zero. So he's going to cast up a mount. So the word mount is um, five 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 zero. If we remember that one, let's put it in this bracket. Get another number. And um, shall take the most fenced cities. Right. So there's going to be a few Hebrew words here. Take is three nine two zero. That's going to be. Now we, we were talking about this yesterday. So three nine two zero. It is similar to 391 and a half, right? It's, it's kind of a rounded up number. Now it would be in prophetic time, 10 years and 320 days. I was just looking at that one, see what that would mean. But in an actual time, you know, it's going to be 10 years. And I, I know we did this before 10 years and 267 and a half days. And is there any place that we can place that, the 3920? that we we know of. I, I spent a lot of time looking at these numbers, trying to understand them. Okay. And then we got uh, the cities of munitions, or the, the cities of the fortress, the fortress cities, right? So it says the most fenced cities. So you're going to have 4013 and uh, 58, 5892. Okay, so I'll put these in here. Um, 4013, I don't know why I typed in a two. Okay, 4013, that's going to be these fortress cities. I'll put this one here, H. And the word cities here is is going to be this word, A-R, so it starts with a, an I-N-Y-O-D, it's an I-N-Y-O-D-R-E-S-H, 5892. 
that Hebrew number with the H in front of it. Okay, so we got some fairly big numbers here. I mean, 4013 as a number. If we put it into days, it's going to be almost 11 years, right? So if I go to 4013, let me just hang on. So it's almost 11 years. It's like four days short, three or four days short. If I put that onto the Mayan calendar, start from the 13th of Actun and count 4013 days, it brings me to December 17th, 2023. So that's eight days ago. If it had brought us today, that would have been pretty interesting, but it doesn't. So we have that number. And then we have uh, the number uh, 5892. So that's going to be, of course, um, a little bit longer. So 5892, 16 years, and 48 days. So I don't know where we would put that. If we were just going to take that, uh, the word cities, and, and try to do something with it, it would just give us, you know, 16 years and 48 days. So whether whether that goes somewhere or not, I don't know yet. Now, we looked at uh, the arms of the south. So these two Hebrew numbers uh, together produced uh, an interesting symbol, right? I don't know why that didn't bold. But there we go. Uh, so together, you're just going to get um, 7,265. And 7,265, that's 19.89 years, with the remainder being 4.26 hours, right? So it's, so the fact that it's the symbol 1989, you know, we can connect it to that symbol. Anything else we can do with this? So the arms of the south, and then we have the Egyptian army under Ptolemy V. So that's the arms of the south is going to be the radical left shall not withstand, that is, stand up. So that word 5971 that we've run into a number of times, I think I got the number right, oh, 5975, pardon me. So when we're dealing with um, this word 597, so we have a few different words that are kind of similar numbers, but 5971 and 5975. So... 5971, does anybody remember what that one is? That's going to be my people, right? And, and then the word stand up is 95975. So there are only four digits difference. Ahmad, uh, is to stand, right? And Am is my, is people, right? So 5971 is people, 5975 is stand. And neither his chosen people. So when we looked at this, uh, neither his chosen people, we crossed out neither. And we're saying it's the choicest people. And it doesn't say neither his choicest people. It says his choicest people, neither shall there be any strength to withstand. So the way the translators were saying, well, well, the chosen people would not be able to stand. There wouldn't be any strength to withstand. Right. And the word withstand is the same word. Right. It's that. Um, uh, five, nine, seven, five. The people of his choices. Um, I don't think that's a good reading of it. Um, so I'm not sure how they would get that. Uh, I can kind of show you a little bit. Um, so when we look at. Uh, um, yeah, I guess the people of his choices. The idea is that the people are, are chosen, right? But the idea here is that these are the choicest people. So the idea is that this would be an elite is the way that I would look at it. But, you know, I could be wrong. When we look at, um, yeah, so as in a selected group. So the question is, <clears throat> So it's a selected group by, so who, whose choicest people are these? Because the idea was, this is the chosen people, God's people, right? That's, that's how it would generally, uh, be understood, 
right, by a lot of people, his chosen people, right? Oh, it's God's chosen chosen people. But this would be the king of the south is south is the king of the south <laughs> chosen people, and and I would put that as something like the World Economic Forum. Does that make sense? This is the elite. That that's what makes the most sense to me. Yeah, the people of his choices. Yeah, so maybe that would make sense. I, I'm just trying to to find this here. Um, so when I look at this verse in Hebrew, so I'm going to show you what I'm looking at, and that might might help, it might not. So this is Scholar's Gateway. This just shows me the Hebrew. Um, but the nice thing is I can hold my mouth, my mouth, my mouse overneath it, over it. Uh, and I get like, here's the word fortress. But you're going to see there's other things added to it. There's a mem at the beginning. And so the root is ma, ma, sir, ma, sir, ma, sir, ma, sir. Not sure how you pronounce it. Okay, well, the World Economic Forum, I'm just using as a symbol. Okay, not not saying it just relates only to. It's it's the idea of this elite. There's these people who consider themselves the elite. They're the ones who need to make the decisions for us because uh, we can't make decisions for ourselves. We're just children. Right? So anyway, and then we have here was Zirovat that is sown, but this is referring to this word here it just says it's a feminine, feminine plural. If I parse it, it's not going to let me parse it. Not sure why. And then this is Negev, the south country. It just has a ha, the south. And then it has not, right? And then it has stand, right? So the main thing I'm trying to say here is that there is, this is not easy to look at here. So what it's trying to say is, so the king of the north shall come, shall cast of a mount, take the most fenced cities, and the arms of the south shall not withstand. So we're going to have Negev, and it says not withstand. Neither is chosen people, neither shall there be any strength to stand. So there's, so this is neither to stand his people and the, the choicest or the best people. Now, it's a masculine plural. I don't, it doesn't really say his people. So I'm not really sure where we would get that. Uh, because it's just the people. Huh. Then it has not strength to, to stand, to take one stand. So as far as how we're going to translate this, the best way to translate this, I think, is how we did before. So we're going to address this as the elite, because this is the king of the South's elite. And, and we're saying that they're not going to be able to stand against the king of the North. And the king of the North is republicanism in the U.S. It's going to take the most fenced cities, right? the apostate Protestant churches, and the arms of the South, that is the Egyptian army under Ptolemy V originally, but in our case, the radical left shall not withstand. So they're not going to be able to stand against the king of the north. They're going to lose this ideological battle, the battle of Paneum. And also the elite, neither shall there be any strength to stand up. So is the World Economic Forum going to be the one that stands up? According to this, in the end, it wouldn't be, right? That is, we studied the World Economic Forum, their plans, you know, to take over the world, and they're incompetent, right? They they live in a fantasy world, so they're not going to be able to stand. So they're they're not the one that we worry about. The one that's going to be able to stand is going to be uh, the papacy. The papacy is going to stand up. So that's why in verse 16, but he pagan Rome the papacy in our history that comes against him, Seleucid Sir representing the U.S., should do according to his will. Now, that's going to be 191 B.C., that we're marking that as midnight, right? So that's the the, center, the symbols of midnight show up in 191 B.C. 
and, and none shall stand before him. So he's going to subjugate Syria, become the next king of the north. That's what happens in that history. Rome becomes the king of the north. It conquers Syria. And in our history, I put the papacy gets the Sunday law. I don't know why I put gets in there, but so he, pagan Rome under Pompey, Pompey the Great. So we're going to say that's the papacy shall stand in the glorious land, the United States, Judea, Palestine, which by his hand, which is a symbol of the message to the Levites, shall be consumed. So uh, if we're going to put the siege of 63 BC in there, we can put what it represents. Now, I don't know if the papacy gets the Sunday law is the best symbol. So what should we put there? That's the parallel of the papacy conquering, conquering Syria in 191 BC. So maybe we should take a look at that. Now you got Daniel 8, 4, 7, and 11, 3, and 36. So Dwight, why are you putting those there? I know your mic's not working too well. I mean, I can look at them. Now we know Daniel 8, 4 is going to be uh, the two-horned beast pushing westward, northward, and southward, the ram. I should say, uh, so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. So we have him doing according to his will. And we have that in, uh, in verse seven, we're going to have him, the ram come and break the, the ram comes. I guess what you can have is the goat comes against the ram and it's going to break his, and the ram break his two horns, and there was no power in the ram to stand before him. Talking about this goat, right, with the notable horn. Okay, so that was the end. Now we know Persia represents the U.S. because it's two, two horn power. Now Greece comes against him, and we already had put the idea that these these transitions have an end and a beginning to them. So I'm not really sure what to do with this verse. And then we have. Verses used by the translators. Yeah, I know the, the verses used by the translators. 11, verse 3 and 36. So that's doing according to his will, and the same in verse 36, 11, 36. The king shall do according to his will. I think that's the main thing they're focusing on. <clears throat> so if we're going to, to look at uh, 191 BC. So 191 BC is exactly between 408, right? The end of this, the, the two, the end of the Jubilee cycle after 457. You got 508, not 508, 408. So 408 plus 49 is going to be 457. So you got 408 and then, and then you're going to have, um, the baptism of Christ in 27 AD. And that's going to be a period of 343 years, which divided by half is 217 years. The center of that is 191 BC. So 217 symbolizes July 21st. And the 191 as a symbol ties to 119 and 911. So, so replace it as this way mark midnight, right? So we're saying this is midnight as a symbol. So in 191, you're going to have, so this is going to be the Battle of Thermopylae. Now, it takes place on April 24th, 191 BC. So I haven't really, I don't know if I dealt with this in too much detail. So April 24th, not 191 BC. On the Julian calendar, it's going to be, because that's the date it is, uh, the 18th day of the first month. So the 18th of Nisan. Okay. So that's the Battle of Thermopylae. Oops, I got it wrong here. Just hang on. It's going to be uh, Nissan 29. So it's the last day of Nissan in 191. So in in that history, it's um, the year 121 on the Macedonian calendar. It's the 29th of Nisanu. And it's the, the 32nd year of Antiochus III. That's when this uh, battle occurs. So that's the Battle of Thermopylae. Now, there's other battles of Thermopylae. You know, it's just a good place to have battles, I guess. But it's a pass, right? 
So I'm just going to read a little bit here from Wikipedia, get some of this background. So the Battle of Thermopylae took place 24th of April, 191 BC. So it's going to be the 29th of Nisan. It was fought as part of the Roman Seleucid War, pitting forces of the Roman Republic, led by the consul Manius Asilius Labrio, against Seleucid Aetolian army of Antiochus III. Great. When the main bodies of the army initially clashed at the Thermopylae Pass, the Seleucids managed to hold their ground, repulsing multiple Roman assaults. However, a small Roman force under Marcus Porcius Cato, that's probably Porcius, uh, managed to outflank the Seleucids from the hillside after surprising the Aetolian garrison. Right. So, so you're going to have this battle. So Rome is going to give us like the prelude, the battle, the aftermath. Okay, so Antiochus was decisively defeated on land and had lost contact with his navy. Upon learning that Glabrio advanced through Phocis and Boeotia without facing any resistance, he rushed back to Ephesus and the Seleucid garrison at Chalcis, or Chalcis followed their emperor back to Asia Minor on May uh, 191 BC. Eubian, Eubioan cities immediately welcomed the Romans as liberators, right? So the main idea here is that Rome is conquering the Seleucid Empire. So the Seleucids no longer control the Aegean Sea, opening the way for the Roman invasion of Asia Minor. So it's not where they've completely conquered Syria. So, so why do we mark this date? Why, why does this date stand out? I mean, we know it's the center of this structure, but we're placing it here that it's a fulfillment of prophecy that this is that he pagan Rome that cometh against him shall do according to his will, and none shall stand before him. So he will subjugate Syria and become the next king of the north. So the, the, the papacy gets the Sunday law. He pagan Rome under Pompey the Great shall stand in the glorious land. Right, that's going to be in 63 BC. So why is this battle marked as the center of the 343 years? of the 62 weeks. What what are the symbols here that we can uh, attach to this? Now, we had looked at this phrase, shall do according to his will, right? So we looked at these different verses that um, use that phrase. Now, there are two different uh, Hebrew numbers. Shall do, but he that cometh against him shall do according to his will, his own will. So it's 6213 and 7522. Okay, so these are more numbers to look at. Did I write? 6213 and 7522. So if I put them together, they're 13,735. And that's going to be one of these other numbers that's 37 years and 220 days or 221, depending on how we look at it. 13,735. So, I mean, if we counted from, you know, when Pope John Paul meets, I mean, we can get January 13th, 2024. I don't know if that's significant. So, you know, that's part of the, so it's, it's a, an odd span to try to fit into these calendar converters. We go from October 6, 1979, which is going to bring us to May 14th, 2017. Okay. So I don't know really where to put that. But that's what we have. So we have um, some more numbers to look at that we're going to have to consider. So we could probably put some more of these numbers in here. It says, none shall stand before him, H369. So this shall stand before him is, you know, they got a bunch of words in hours. So uh, shall stand is 795975 and 6440. I know this is kind of boring stuff what I'm doing here. I said H6440. And he shall stand nine five nine seven five again. And in the glorious land. Right? So in the glorious land. Now that's six six four three. It's kind of interesting. Um sometimes, you know, these numbers, just parts of them. But anyway, six six four three. That's Hebrew number there. And which by his hand shall be consumed three six 
0.15 is consumed. Okay, so some of these numbers we already had in there, and we would what we'd normally do, some of them we've looked at before because they're repeated numbers. Um, obviously, this stand, withstand, stands, this, this word shows up a lot. So this number, uh, 6440, it's, um, I've looked at this number before. In prophetic years, it's 17 years and 320 days. So we looked at that earlier. Uh, we should, at least I'm pretty sure we did. So 320 days. At least I looked at it. So it's 17.888888 years in prophetic time. Oh, my phone scared me. So it's, it's 17.6317 years in actual years. So it's 231 days, 17 years and 231 days. <clears throat> so 6440 as a span of time, if we went back to like uh, 2001, right, we could obviously get into, so I'm just going to go here. Uh, brings us from September 11th to April 30th, 2019. I don't know anything in particular import, importance regarding April 30th, 2019. Uh, the one thing it does is um, if we count from September, so this is the number that's the glorious lamp, 6643. Now it is 6,633 days from September 11th to November 9th, 2019. So if you added 10 days to that, it would just bring you to November 19th, 2019. I don't know if there's any significance in November 19th, but that number anyway, 6643, that's what it does. So there might be some other place we place it, 66. Okay, any, any other thoughts here? So we're, we're moving pretty slowly through this, looking at all these numbers. People watching would be very bored by this. I'm sure you guys are bored by it. So we're going to have to look at these numbers again um, and try to tie up these verses. So if there are symbols that can attach it to our history in the Hebrew numbers here. So I don't see a lot in this verse, and that which is, is fairly telling in the sense that verse 14 and verse 13, they're pregnant with symbols from the Hebrew numbers. And, and we have a little bit in verse 15, but we don't have every single verse, every single number fit all the time. I mean, that would be impossible, but it, they do fit at certain times. And uh, one of the things that I look at with the verse is I will use the, the Bible uh, indexer program and look at some of the spans. Like, so for instance, uh, you're going to have uh, spans of times in these verses or symbols in these verses. It can also be used, but uh, so we're going to probably look at some of those tomorrow. So any final thoughts? Okay. okay, let's close in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this day. And uh, we just pray for your continued help as we study. We know that these things are difficult, and I just pray for wisdom and understanding. Bless each person for today watching these videos. And uh, may you guide and direct us. May your angels watch over us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.